All right, all right. Well, today, boy, do we got a real delicious Jewishy treat coming up here. We're going to make Kanish. Now, there's plenty of Kanish recipes out there in, in on the online world out there. But not a whole lot of videos demonstrating the technique. So we, what we're going to do here is make a video showing the technique. That means it's going to take a little longer than just have I show you the ingredients. But you're going to like it because you're going to be able to make a Kanish. Now you may be asking, what's a Kanish? Well, what's a Kanish? What's a Kanish? You could think of it like a, you know, a Jewish empanada or a Jewish samosa. And uh, it's no less delicious than any of these other delicious hand pastries. Nothing wrong with them. They've become very popular in their around the world, outside their respective cuisines and points of origin. Why? Because they're delicious. Well, it's time for the Kanish to take its rightful place among the uh, those other delicious hand pastries of the world. So, we got to do two things here. We got to we got to make a dough, we got to make a filling. So for the dough, we're going to have flour, eggs and some other stuff, vinegar, salt, vegetable oil. And for the filling, you see some potatoes here, onions, uh, fresh parsley, and so that's what we're going to start with. I got to start by peeling these potatoes and making some fried onions to go in them. It's going to be a classic onion potato, potato onion knish. So I'm going to get get busy here, cut a little bit of this, uh, cut a little of this manual labor business out of this video here. And we're going to have a good time. All right. So order of business number one in this video is going to be to make the filling in the knish. So. It's a potato onion knish over here in this big pot. What do I got? I got potatoes. I uh, peeled and quartered about two and a half pounds of good potatoes. Got them uh, here, bringing them to a boil in salted water. Over here, I got onions I'm sauteing. About four onions. I want a lot of onions in this in this knish I'm making here, and I chopped the onions kind of big. When I bite into that knish, I want to see those onions. I don't just want to taste them, I want to see them. That's something you ought to think about when you're cooking. When you bite into it, what do you want to taste? What do you want to see? That's what I'm thinking about already. So I got them chopped up kind of big here. You might see I also got a couple of shallots in there. And it's just something I wanted to throw in there. I want a lot of onions, and I chop them big. You do what you want, how you want it in your knish. You want it just all potatoes? You can do that. I already made another video about how to fry onions, so I'm going to go on in length about that. Now over here, what's happening in this pot with potatoes, we're just making mashed potatoes. I bet you know how to make mashed potatoes. So you make mashed potatoes. That's what we're going to do. About two and a half pounds worth. And that's what's going on over here. So now we're going to wait again. That's what we do with Jewish cooking. We wait all the time. Labor of love. And that's what a knish is. It's a labor of love. Okay, we come back in a minute. Okay, let's check in over here. It's been about 20 minutes. My uh, potatoes is done cooking. I'm mashing them. I'm not done mashing them yet. Don't you look at those tell me that you think I'm done. I'm not done. I'm going to mash them real good. I'm going to make basically mashed potatoes. Over here, my onions are still frying. They're, they're browning, but I want them even browner. I want my onions brown and salty for this dish. Brown and salty. Reminds me of that uh, Chef Aid episode they got there at uh, South Park. Hey, everybody, have you seen my knish? They big and salty and brown. Yeah, like that. But well, that's how I want the onions. The onions, the potatoes, they're going to go together eventually with the parsley, too. And they're going to make the filling. So I'm going to make mashed potatoes. But I'm going to finish up the onions here, get them good and brown. Mix them all together, make sure it tastes good, make sure it's a good consistency. And then, we, then we're going to move on. Now one thing I'm going to do, I'll tell you a couple things over here. If I had my druthers, I'd be frying these onions in, in schmaltz. But I'm, I'm making a vegetarian this year. My wife's vegetarian. I, I want everybody in the family to be able to enjoy. So I, they're not frying in schmaltz. Now I also, when they're done frying, I would deglaze it with a little bit of chicken stock. But I'm going to use veggie stock to deglaze it and make sure I get all the delicious oniony bits and flavor, all that caramelization off of the pan there. And then they're going to get mixed in the potatoes. So you make your mashed potatoes, you make your fried onions, we're going to have a good time. They're going to make a beautiful, harmonious, delicious relationship. All right, back in a minute. Okay, now I got my onions back there. They're sufficiently brown and salty. Got my potatoes mashed and I mixed in the parsley with them. 
So now it's just time to combine. But the, the little bit of technique here, you know, I, I don't want to mash the onions. So I got the potatoes completely mashed before I add the onions. I'm going to put the onions in the potatoes. And then I'm going to deglaze that pan with some veggie stock. Okay, now, as far as I'm concerned, if you need instant veggie stock, there's, there's no better than better than bullion. Okay, I love, love this stuff. It's delicious. Now, it's a little salty. You got to be careful because it is salty. But it's a delicious veggie stock. So, you know, they don't pay me to say that, but I like it a lot. I want you to know what I use. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. They're going to get mixed. And then it's going to be time for what? Well, it's probably time for a little Evan Williams. So, Lachaim, we're going to have some of that. Now, let's talk about some variations you might want to do here. I put some parsley in here. Over here, I just got these plain old onions with nothing but salt and fried in oil. And maybe you want to deglaze with red wine. Maybe over here in the potatoes, you're going to add cilantro instead of the parsley, or both. Who knows? Make it fancy. But, I, you know, I'm making it the traditional way. Uh, tradition. What is tradition? I, I don't know. There is no tradition. I'm, you know, my, most of my family's Ashkenaz, that's what we do. We, we make them this way. Okay? But, you know, your family, maybe you got different traditions. You make it your way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Okay? We all here together. So you, you make it the way you want. This is the way I'm doing it today. But, you know, you do it different. You put some mushrooms, some red wine in there, it's going to be delicious. You're going to love it. So I'm going to start mixing all that together. All right. Here we go. We're going to put this in here. That in there, and you see all them, all that brown goodness on the pan. Here. It's not burned. It's, that's caramelized flavor right there. I want to harvest every little bit of it. Gonna do that with a little of this veggie stock here. All right, the pan's still pretty hot, so I'm just gonna mix it around there. Scrape up them brown bits. Oh yeah, that's flavor right there. That that's flavor for your knish. That's you. That's what you want. You want all that. I used about half a cup of veggie stock here. It's also it's gonna make my mashed potato consistency just a little more creamy. Okay. So this is the way you can do it. You get your potatoes creamy. You know you you making it pie if you want to eat it with this or that. You know I don't know. You know that way you you just you don't even have to use milk to make them creamy. This is what this this is gonna do it for you. So here we go. All right, I think that's about ready. I scraped up the brown bits, and eh, there's still a little more. I'm gonna keep scraping. You know, there's no rush. There's no rush. This is a labor of love. Jewish cooking, you know, it takes time. You don't rush it. You don't make condition to rush. Why would you do that? I don't do that. All right, so that's that, and now I'm gonna gently mix everything together because, you know, I don't wanna mash my onions up. I want my onions to stay kind of whole, you know? Just gonna mix that up in there, and that's gonna be, oh, delicious knish filling right there. Now, let me tell you something. You gotta taste it now. You gotta taste it and see if it's as salty as you want it, because at this point, it's ready to go in there. And uh, it's not gonna get any better unless you make it better. So you wanna be better, you make it better. I've been tasting it here, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to call it filling good, and so now we're going to make the dough. Okay, now we got the filling done. It's time to move on to making the dough. So what we got over here? Well, I got I got two eggs in this bowl. In my Pyrex, I got a cup of water, and I got a half a cup of oil. I use canola oil. Use whatever vegetable oil you like. In the bowl, I start with three cups of flour. We're probably going to need more, and uh, some salt half teaspoon or so. Oh, also in the Pyrex I got about a, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Okay, so we're gonna beat the eggs. And I told you this video is about technique. Alright, there's lots of recipes out there. You want to see how it's done, that's why you're watching this video. I'm gonna beat the eggs. I'm gonna show you these steps here. So, I'm beating the eggs. They don't need to be super beaten, but you know, get them good and beaten, lightly beaten, medium beaten, uh, whatever you call it. Now, I'm going to mix this together with my other liquid ingredients here. Okay. So I'm mixing the egg there with the water, the oil, and the vinegar. Now, over here in my glass bowl, I got my flour and my salt, and I got a wooden spoon. It's the uh, women of the JCC wooden spoon, as you notice here, you know, from the great challah bake. Bless them. 
All right, so we're going to put the uh, the wet ingredients into the dry and start mixing with a wooden spoon here. And again, I'm, I'm showing you all these steps here just so, you know, you see what it looks like when someone does it. You'll see. You know, this is messy. Stuff gets sticky, you know, it gets messy. But that that's, that's the point of having a video here to show all the steps here. You know, plenty of recipes out there. You want to see the technique for making a knish. So I'm mixing this up with a wooden spoon. I'm guessing, you know, you start with less flour than you need. You can always add more. But you can't take it out. It's difficult. You know, there's no way to take flour out. You can see the dough is real sticky. Right? We're going to need more. So I'm going to get some more all-purpose flour here. I ain't going to add it all at once. You know, maybe shake in a few tablespoons, quarter cup. Because it still looks sticky. Phones ring. Who's that? It's probably someone one of them political calls. Got enough of that already. I don't need that. I don't need that. Now, dough's getting to where it's sticking together a little better to itself than it is to the bowl. So now I might turn it out onto my nice clean countertop. You notice I'm scraping the edges of the bowl because I, I don't want to waste nothing. I'm going to put some uh, flour on my surface here. Mix that around. Use my wooden spoon to scrape and move that ball of dough out. All right. Sometimes I use a spatula, rubber silicone spatula, scrape it off. Yeah, you can use your finger, whatever you like. You know, so you want to get your fingers in there, you get them in there. You get them in there. All right, I don't like to waste nothing. So I'm scraping my bowl with my wooden spoon here. I'm gonna get some flour on my fingers there and just scrape that off there. Now we're not making a bread though. We don't want it to be real, real tough and chewy. Like a bread, like a challah. We're gonna do challah soon. I promise. I'm gonna do a challah video pretty soon here. Taking all this stuff off. But we're gonna knead it to make sure that the consistency is what we want. And we do want to develop a little bit of the gluten because, you know, this is gonna be the wrapper. This is going to hold, hold the knish together. So we need a little bit of strength in it. So I'm going to knead it just a little bit. But it's still, you know, it's still basically a pastry. So you don't want it to be tough. I'm really just kneading it as a way to mix it. Check the consistency, make sure it's not too sticky. So what we're going to have to do later, once we let this rest a little bit, we're going to have to roll it out. It's going to need to be a consistency that we can roll out without it all sticking to everything. You know what I mean? So, I'm just kneading it a little bit. It starts to feel sticky on my hands. I put a little more flour on it. I just keep kneading it. It feels pretty good. It's a comforting thing. These are troubling times in our country here. It's a comforting thing just to make yourself a nice, nice batch of dough. Work with it with your hands. Know you're making something that's going to sustain your family. It's a healthy, beautiful thing, you know? That's what we need. That's what we need right here. And share it with somebody, you know? Share it with somebody. Bring some love in the world, you know what I mean? All right. I'm just going to keep kneading this. Feeling a little sticky to me still, so I shake a little flour on it. But again, I don't want it to get real tough like a, like a bread dough. just want to get a good mix, not too sticky here. I've used about, uh, I'd, I'd say I've used, you know, maybe about uh, eh, three and three quarters of a cup of flour. Three and three quarter cups. Okay, so you, you know, you're going to want to have at least four cups on it. So I'm kneading it. It's not sticking to my hands too much now, you know. I got a little flour here on the work surface. And it's feeling pretty good. Beautiful thing. I'm developing some of the gluten here, you know, activating it. Because again, we need it to stick together. Just like all, all us people, you know. We gotta stick together. We gotta be kind to one another. We gotta support each other. The way the gluten supports the bread. The way the gluten and this dough is gonna support the knish. We gotta do that. It's real important, people. Bring some love in the world. Right? I don't know any better way to bring love in the world than true delicious food. I don't care what culture you're from, what political affiliation you're from, delicious food right there.
that it breaks down the walls. You sit down, you have a good meal with someone, you can talk, you can talk and talk. You know, you may not agree, but you can shake hands, you can exchange embraces. That's what you can do when you exchange words over a good meal together that you made in your own home. And is there anything more comforting than a Kanish? I don't know. I don't think so. That's what we want to do. Break down the barriers here. Break down the barriers. Add some more love to the world. That's what Cook Jewish is all about. I just want to put more love in the world. You ever hear me say something that you think is cutting on someone? You tell me. I don't want to cut on nobody. Just making these videos here. Just making this dope. That's what I'm doing. All right, this is about done here, so I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna just put it back in a bowl, and I'm gonna let it rest for about, you know, half hour. Let the gluten relax a little bit so I can roll it out real good. Okay, now, I got my beautiful little dough ball here. Now, a lot of Kanish recipes you're gonna read online, you're gonna say to split it up, roll it out a certain way, make some small knishes. That's fine. You want to do that, you do that. That's not how I want to do it today. You see, five generations of my family have eaten knish at Yona Schimmel. Yona Schimmel's knishery down there in Houston, in the city. Some of you know it. Five generations. From my great grandparents all the way down to my kids. Five generations. Your including kids? Including my kids. They've been there. Some of them don't remember it. It's been a few years. But uh, they've been there too. My bubby been there. Oh, my bubby. God bless her. Hashem bless her. Her memory is a blessing. My bubby. We're gonna we're gonna make big kanish like they serve at Yonah Shemel. Okay, so we're not gonna break it up. We're gonna make a giant roll out here. It's gonna be as thin as possible. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start. A little by hand here, I got a nice clean counter, lightly flour. I got a little extra flour in case I need it. We're gonna roll it out really long. You're gonna say this is ridiculous. Yeah, well, you know, I'm cooking Jewish in here. We're just gonna, huh, I got a dog hair in there. Pick that out. I don't need no dog hair in my canary. I'm pretty sure dog hair is not kosher. See how long this is. And we're still going. We want it to be thin. You want this to be so thin, you can just about see through it. If you held it up to the light, you could see through it. Through it? Yeah, see through it. My kids, you know, sometimes they don't understand. Doing so good at that one end, at the other end here over here, I'm doing pretty good. You know, you're gonna you're gonna have to experiment with your finish. You're gonna have to play with it in your kitchen. That's what you're gonna do. So you know one end doesn't look as good as spread out as the others. You know what? You learn. And I'm learning too. I'm always learning. I never claim that anything I made is the best. Maybe the best I made to date. There's always room for improvements. You gotta, you gotta have that mindset about your cooking, that growth mindset. I'm gonna take this over here because I'm not happy with it. I'm fold it back in because I want it rectangular. Big, big rectangle here. Big old rectangle. Maybe you know, tree. Three feet long, three and a half feet long, 12, 14, 16 inches wide. We ain't making no little knish here today. We're making a big knish. Big, oh, yeah, got a little aggressive there. You can smooth it out. We're making a big knish. 
big finish. Like you got a yarn shells. A big tree of foliage finish. That's what we want here. See, that's ridiculous. How big, how big are we roll this up? Well, you know, we need a big rectangle. You're going to shape it. You're going to pull it with your hands. You can pull it with your hands. It's fine. You know, the dough's tough. Even if you pull a couple of little spots in, you make a couple little holes, it's all right. Because we're going to roll it up like a jelly roll. All right? We're going to roll it up like a jelly roll. You're going to see what I mean. It's getting pretty thin. I don't, know. I don't even know if you can see the whole thing. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. So it's, you know, I don't know. I should, I should get a tape measure. I'm going to go get a tape measure, show you how, long, how, how big this rolled out. All right, one of my wonderful sons here provided me with a tape measure. I rolled this out to about uh, 40 inches by 14 inches. Now it's time to get the fill. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to put the filling down here. We're going to shape the filling. I'm putting it, you know, closer to the near side of the camera here. We're going to shape the filling into a log. All right. So, again, you know, I know this video is long. It's because it's a labor of love and, you know, you want more than the recipe. You want to see how it's done. So, you know, I'm showing you how it's done here and taking time. Making us some big old kanish. That's how we like it. All right. So again, my proportions here, it worked out all right. You know, I made uh, about two and a half, three pounds of potatoes. You know, my dough had about a cup of water, about four cups of flour in it. And you can see how the proportions have worked out here. Take your hands, get your hands in there. Don't be afraid of getting in there with your hands. It's totally fine. Okay, you're just making a log of this filling here. Okay, you think it's a little thicker in some parts, too thin in others? Move it around. Move it around, make it nice and even. We're gonna roll it up like a jelly roll in a minute here. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we got a nice log of the fill in there. Now, what we're gonna do, I said we're gonna roll up like a jelly roll. Gonna pick it up off the counter here. Those nice and stretchy. We're gonna stretch it over there. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. Oh, it's beautiful. Now we're gonna start to roll it. And it rips a little bit. Don't get up tight, you know, loosen it up at the bottom there with your thumbs. You know, if it's sticking to your counter, if it's sticking too much, next time use less, use a little more flour down there. If it's not sticking, congratulations. If it is sticking, just use your thumbs, just like that. You could loosen it up. You know, we got a little bit of a gluten activated, so you know, the dough, the dough is a little tough. It can handle it. You see, I got a hole right there, I got a hole right there, I got a hole there. It's fine. You know, these are, these are lovingly crafted pastries. They're not perfect. They're not meant to be perfect. Everyone's going to look a little different than every other one. And that's totally fine. The world's full of diversity. And so, and so may your cooking be. And so can your knishes be. It's a beautiful thing. Now, rolling it up like this, what we do is we create layers. We create layers in the outer wrapping of the knish. And that's good because it gives it outer wrapping strength. All right, now I'm going to pinch that a little bit. I'm just going to go down the line and pinch the edges there. 
because that's what I want. I, I want it to be sealed. I want it to be nice and sealed. Now, at this point, make sure it sticks together. Now, if, you, if your surface was well floured, it might not want to stick together. You might have to, you know, persuade it a little bit. Be gentle with it. You know, this is your food. You're going to eat it. Don't be rough with it. Be gentle with it. Now, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up. We're going to cut this roll up. Make the connection. On the end, I'm going to start here. I'm going to stuff the end a little bit. I'm going to pinch the dough on the end together. All right. Now, I also already have a couple of baking sheets. Baking. I should say baking. Baking sheets that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. All right. Here we go. We're going to cut these. We're going to take this cutting tool right here. We're going to cut them. You make the knish the size you want. Now these aren't even as big as Jonas Schimmel's. I got to say, Jonas Schimmel's are even bigger. Mine came out a little smaller this time. You know what? That's fine. Because I'm sure they're going to be delicious. What's going to be filling them? My child asks, what is filling them? Potatoes and onions. So when, I, so when I cut them, notice they almost seal themselves. This is the end one. I pinched the end shut. I'm going to take it the side that was most open. I'm going to put that side down on my sheet. Okay, I'm just going to keep on doing this. Some people cut them with their hands. They just use the hand and they chop it like that with a hand. That's fine. You know what? You want to do it that way? You try it. You see how it comes out for you. Now I'm cutting there and I'd say each one is about an inch and a half wide. Okay? Each one's maybe about an inch and a half wide. I don't even know how many I'm going to get out of this. That's part of the beauty of this. It's like a mystery. Now, if I take a look at each one, I'll tell you this one, I'm just going to take the dough I'm going to push the filling back in a little bit, take the dough and pull it a little bit, pinch it shut. That's going to be the top. You can pinch both ends shut if you want. You want to pinch both ends shut, you do it. I'm going to leave one open. Some people eat their knish like that. The end is open. Some people pinch them shut both ends. That end that's open, when you see the filling, I'm going to put that facing down on my cookie sheet. Okay? And I'm just going to repeat this. I'm just going to go on and on. Find the end that's easiest to close on each one. I'm just going to pinch it shut. Okay? So, this is where it gets real repetitive. You can see how I'm pinching it. Pinching it like that. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to take a little break from the camera here because we don't need all that. Okay, so now I've got all my knish formed. I wound up with about 20 knish here. From all that, all that hard work. About 20 knish. They're looking beautiful. Last thing is some egg wash. Now I'm, some people make the egg wash with just egg yolks. Some use a whole egg. You do the egg wash that you like. I'm gonna paint this on here. I just, I just mixed up an egg in a bowl here. I'm just gonna paint this egg wash on these. I have my oven preheated to 375 so they're gonna go in the oven at 375 as soon as I'm done with this step right here you can see the size I made them I can fit up to a dozen on a standard half, shy, half, half, half size cookie sheet over here making some nice egg wash on these over here with my children providing sound effects Hopefully those, those, don't, those sound effects don't register on the camera's audio. Oy, oy vey. It's enough already, okay? So, I'm going to keep on painting on the egg wash here. I'm going to give the camera a little break. Okay, the egg wash is on all of them now. We're going to put them in the oven at 375, about a half hour. I'm going to check them, of course, along the way. Alright, the knish been in there 25 minutes. 
in about 25 minutes or so. We're going to take a look, see what they look like. They're not quite golden brown yet. Okay, we want them golden brown on the outside. I'm going to put them back in. I want to get it hot in my hand. So, they're going back in. Check them in another five, ten minutes. All right, these Kanish, they were in the oven about 35 minutes. Beautiful golden brown. If I stop talking, you might be able to hear them sizzle a little bit. They're all done. I'm gonna let them cool down here a minute. The family gonna enjoy them. So, that was the, uh, the basic Kanish how-to. Uh, I, I hope you try to make some Kanish at your house. Kanish, Kanash. I hope you like it. My, my wife says Kanish, Kanash. Yeah, you nosh, nosh away. Because I don't know if there's anything more comforting, delicious than a Kanish in your hand. It's a beautiful thing. So eat in good health, l'chaim, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, I forgot to flip them over. So here's what they look like. You flip them over since I didn't, you know, I didn't close the other side up. You see that uh, beautifully golden brown potato on your mixture there. Right. Really tell your father how to knish us. How to knish? Really good. How to knish, kids? They're really good. Yeah, and the whole family approves. Eating good health. Chaim.